Welcome back to your monthly photo news update. We're rounding up all the news that happened in May. This was a big one. Oh, this was a big one. There were a lot of things that happened. A lot of new cameras, new lenses, updates to photo editing software. I mean, there's a lot of big stuff. We're gonna go through all of it. Let's just get into it. Let's start where we always start, which is with the new products that came out in May. Now, cameras, lenses, tripods, firmware updates, all kinds of stuff happened throughout May. Let's start with some of the big stuff and it doesn't get much bigger than the new Nikon Z8. This was super exciting. This is amazing. It's like a baby Z9. We did a video on it. We went up to the launch event. That was super fun. There'll be another video on it probably next week, like a full kind of deeper review on it. But the kind of short version is that this camera is incredible. If you were ever put off from the Z9 because of the size and the weight, this is the camera. And whether you shoot photo or video or both, oh, you're gonna have such a good time with this camera, it's just, it's just very, very good. But that wasn't the only massive launch. We also saw the Leica Q3, which was actually only last week. And that, that's quite the camera. That's another big launch. You know, that's very much a very highly anticipated camera and it absolutely delivers both in the photographic space and again in the video space, which is a big thing these days, I think for cameras to be able to do both. And the Q3 absolutely excels at both of them while retaining that kind of beautiful aesthetic that Leica has with their cameras. We've got a full review over on the channel, but it wasn't just kind of big high-end cameras that we saw releasing. Sony released a new vlogging camera, so the ZV-1 Mark II, which improves quite nicely on the original ZV-1. We saw the Canon PowerShot V10, which is also a vlogging camera, a little bit different design. We'll actually have a review on that camera in the coming days, but it's a very interesting design to it. Canon also released the R100, which is kind of an entry-level mirrorless camera, along with a new lens as well. We also saw the Panasonic S52X actually coming out with spec we didn't even know it was going to have, so it's even further improved from where we thought it was. Very exciting. We've got a video on that on the channel as well. That's a beautiful looking camera. And again, a fantastic hybrid option. And of course, it's not just cameras and lenses. We saw a new tripod from Three Legged Thing, the Charles 2.0, which we reviewed. That's a lovely tripod. And of course, Fujifilm released the XS20, which is a camera I was not expecting to love as much as I did. It's kind of a mid-range camera, kind of top end of photo enthusiast, but actually I feel like you could use it for professional stuff as well. It feels like more than the sum of its parts. It's actually got some really impressive spec in there, but just using it either for photo and again for video, that's a lovely, lovely camera to play around with. And Fujifilm also released the new 8mm f3.5 lens as well, which is a lovely wide angle option. It comes out to be about 12 millimeters with a full frame equivalent, but oh, a lovely lens for vlogging, for landscape, for architecture, for all kinds of things. Now, those are some of the new products that came out in May and there, there were a lot, it was a big month, but there was also some big news kind of just generally in the photographic space, specifically, when it comes to photo editing. So for example, Photoshop has had some pretty big updates. We saw the big update coming out, which added the remove tool, which we've done a video on, a tutorial on, which I'll link all this stuff down in the description so you can go and check it out. That's great, that's a fantastic tool, it makes it very, very easy to remove unwanted things from your photos. And in the Photoshop beta, the newest update adds generative fill, which has the capacity to change photo editing forever. I mean, it's kind of equal parts, super exciting, and I just cannot stop playing around with it. And then a little bit scary as well, just a little bit scary, because some of it is so realistic and good, it's unbelievable. Now, I'll pop a link again to all the videos we've done. We've done videos on all of this stuff, so you can check those all out in the description if you wanna go see kind of a deeper dive into a lot of this stuff. We had Tutorial Tuesdays on things like the many possibilities of a 150 to 600 millimeter lens, which is a nice, interesting, varied focal length. And of course, then some Tutorial Tuesdays on Lightroom and Photoshop features as well. And going forward, we'll be doing tutorials on Capture One and some other editing software as well. So if there's anything particular you'd like to see over the next sort of month, let me know in the comments what you'd love to see in a Tutorial Tuesday, because I'd love to make the stuff you actually wanna see. But now we're heading into June, and this is exciting. It's a great time of year for photography. Yes, it's very bright in the day, but that's not a problem. You can head to a forest, you can go through the dappled light in the trees and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's a beautiful look. We've got videos on how to make the most of kind of the bright, harsh sunlight, how to go out and shoot in that. And of course, those beautiful summer sunsets. Oh, yes. 
This is the time. I'm very excited about that. Also, beautiful night skies. Yes, you have to wait a bit longer for it to get properly dark, but the Milky Way is coming out and it's very, very lovely to take photos of that kind of thing. Let me know what you're taking photos of over the next month. I'd be really interested to see what's got you excited in June. I'm just excited to go out and it be warm and sunny and nice. That's all, that's all I want. That's all I want. We also have Park Cameras Imaging Festival towards the end of June and the beginning of July at our London store and our Burgess Hill store. You can find the full details for that over at parkcameras.com. I'll also pop a link so you can go and check that out for yourself in the description. But those are great events to check out some of the latest and greatest kits. We've got various different professional photographers coming to give talks about the kind of photography they do, how they do it, what they use, all kinds of interesting stuff. Definitely one to check out. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to check out all the latest content, reviews, tutorials, all kinds of stuff. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.